Hi, researchers. Will you think back about all the research that you've done so far about your animal? And as you're thinking about that, so far in this unit, we've been mostly thinking about the notes that we've been taking as probably main ideas that you're learning about your animal. And then maybe what are some details that go along some of the subtopics that we're learning about? And the truth is, researchers, that when you go to research, you're also going to think about your own ideas. And really strong researchers do that. And we do that all the time. If you think about birthday parties, for example, you probably have strong ideas about that. Or maybe there's problems that you see in the world, or maybe some issues that are happening in school, and you might have your own ideas about that too. Researchers do the same thing. So today, I want to teach you that really strong researchers they grow their own ideas, and they think their own thoughts. And one of the ways that they do that is by almost thinking about their subject that they're learning about, in this case animals, like the characters that they're reading about in their books when they're reading fiction. So it could be that your subject or your animal has traits or motivations and struggles. And we could be kind of thinking about that same exact work as well. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to read to you just a little bit of an excerpt from a read aloud that you already know. The Sea of Headwaiters. Hmm. Early in the morning, one of the parent birds, either male or female, would set out toward the sea, leaving its mate in charge of the nestlings. Wait a minute. That's completely new information to me. I didn't know that, like, either the male or the female would go toward the sea. Like, it seems like penguins don't have the same types of gender rules that I thought in the beginning. Interesting. So now that I have my own idea, I can think about over about the subtopics. And I think that this one kind of has to do with the behaviors. So I'm going to go back into my notes. Okay, so, so far I've written down penguin behaviors. Penguins get food for their young. And I'm kind of thinking right now, just like what I was thinking before, hmm, males and female, parents don't have gender roles. It seems like Both parents play a role. In raising their young. So researchers, do you see what I did? Is I was sort of thinking about my subtopic, taking some notes, but I wasn't just writing down the facts. I was also thinking about my own ideas. And in this case, I was thinking mostly about their traits. So I'm going to start to read a second section from this excerpt that we already know, A Sea of Headwaiters. As I'm reading it, can you start to think, what are your own thoughts? Once the parent bird reached the edge of the colony, it had run the gauntlet of several thousand youngsters before it reached its own nest, burrow, and babies. All these youngsters were convinced that by launching themselves at the adult bird in a sort of tackle, they could get him to regurgitate the food it was carrying. So the adult had to avoid the attackers of these fat, furry youngsters by dodging to, to and fro like a skillful center forward on a football field. Generally, the parent would end up at its nest, burrow. It would squat down at the entrance to the burrow and stare at its feet, pensively making motions like someone was trying to stifle an acute attack of hiccups. On seeing this, the youngsters would work themselves into a frenzy of delighted anticipation, uttering their wind, wheezing cries, flapping their wings frantically, pressing themselves close to the parent's body, and stretching their beaks and clattering them up against the adults. This would go on for perhaps 30 seconds when the parent would suddenly 
with an expression of relief, regurgitate vigorously, plunging its beak so deeply into the gaping mouths of the youngsters, you felt sure it would never be able to pull its head out again. Can you picture that? There's like the parent, there's the baby. What are you thinking right now? Pause the video. Tell someone next to you or something next to you. So maybe some of you were thinking that it was really disgusting, but you could have also been thinking that, wow, these baby penguins, they really rely on their parents for food. It's maybe almost like they're human beings. It's pretty amazing. So researchers, if this was your topic and you were studying penguins, you might just jot down some of your own thoughts in your book, in your notes. And as you go to work today, it'll be really important that you're not just writing down any old information. You could be thinking your own thoughts and that sometimes it's thinking about the traits of your animal and subject, their motivations, what are they struggling with? And you can notice that what this researcher was doing when they were researching gorillas, they said gorillas have lots of meal options, and they wrote down some of the things that they, they actually eat. So like wild celery, tapioca, bamboo, ginger, wild bananas, and lots more. And after they had jotted down all their notes, they thought about this big idea. And they said that gorillas have so much that they could eat. Too bad they are fussy eaters, and they can't experience all of the food that they could be eating. So researchers, as you go to research today, keep taking notes. And will you not only be thinking about the facts, but also ask yourself what your own thoughts are. And as you're doing that, you could be thinking about your animal and your subject's traits, motivations, and struggles. Happy researching.